All right, I am back with another video, and today I am going to be doing a slightly different build, something a bit different than my usual content. Um, basically what this build is going to be is kind of an alternate take on my Psionic Warrior build that uses some different classes, different elements, and kind of focuses more on the uh, Mind Flare abilities, rather than just being a person who casts a lot of Psychic spells. Because the big issue with that build is that Yes, it can work as a martial fighter uh, that uses a lot of psychic spells. However, it does um, suffer from the fact that it does not get extra attack. But then if you wanted to get extra attack, you'd lose out on the um, on the spells. So you wouldn't be able to get the higher level stuff, including the really powerful thematic and fun telekinesis. So I decided to kind of look at the build from a different angle. Now, don't get me wrong, this video is not a version 2.0 or a replacement for my original Psionic Warrior build. That build, I think, stands really well as a heavy armor, a uh, single attack strike, like, psychic mage. I think that still works really, really well as its own build and is still fun. But, however, I did want to try and see if I could make a more effective martial fighter that still hacks at, has access to most, if not all, of that kit. The only thing we're really going to be missing that I personally quite like, but was also another criticism of the build, was um, the portent ability from the Divination Wizard. Because while I think it was really, really cool thematic and put a unique twist on the build, a lot of people lamented the fact that, that, that the portent mechanic in this game is really annoying because it constantly flashes up every single time a skill check or roll or whatever is rolled and I can totally understand that frustration so I wanted to kind of take another pass at it because I feel like the idea of a psychic warrior is really really interesting and I wanted to give it another go so we're going to be playing as a Gif Yankee, and this is important it's going to give us medium armor proficiency which we want it's going to give us proficiency with rapiers uh, not rapier, sorry, uh, short swords, great swords, and uh, long swords, which we want, mainly great swords, as you can clearly see, and it's also going to give us a bunch of st stuff that's related to equipment we're going to be getting later on. I mean, if you've seen my Sonic Warrior video, you may have a general idea of where this is going, however, there are some key changes, so do stick around. Um, so, we are going to be kicking things off as a warlock here, and immediately, just to get this out of the way, we're going to be going with the Great Old One subclass. The Great Old One subclass basically gives you a most, if not all, of the important psychic spells. Now, the reason I did not initially go Warlock when I made my original Psionic Warrior video is the lower amount of spell slots really feels like a detriment to someone who wants to be casting these psychic abilities all the time. However, I feel like if you wanted to make a kind of a psychic, you know, spell sword, psychic gish, whatever you want to call it, this probably is the better way to go because of the Pact of the Chain. A pack to the blade, my apologies. Um, and the reason we want to play as a Gif Yankee here is to get that medium armor proficiency and also kind of get some more of these psychic abilities as well. Uh, so I've brought back good old Cornelius Codswallet for this build because I he's a Gif Yankee profile that I already had. But let's actually get back into the subclass a little bit. Uh, first off, we're going to be getting Dissonant Whispers. This is one of the spells that I wanted to go into, got, that I grabbed the Magic Initiate Bard feat for before, which <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes in that video, but one of them was lamenting the fact that you could only cast it once per long rest and not realizing that was a limitation of the feat and not part of the actual spell. I was very new to build making, especially in Baldur's Gate 3 back then, and so I'm learning, a so I've learned a lot, which is again why I wanted to take another pass at this, but anyway, it's enough about my own rambling. So we're getting Dissonant Whispers here, this is going to be our main level 1 spell that we're going to want to be casting quite a lot, and it's definitely important to the build. Uh, we're also going to be getting Tasha's Hideous Laughter, a pretty good early game concentration spell to immediately just take a powerful enemy out of combat, definitely worth picking up. And also we get Mortal Reminder, when you land a critical hit against a creature, that creature and any nearby enemies must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become frightened. Uh, this doesn't really do anything for this build, it was one of, the, one of the main features of my slasher build, my Halloween build, but it's not as critical here, we're mainly here for the spell selection. Speaking of, let's get into the cantrips. Eldritch Blast we are absolutely going to be taking here, because it is the um, interesting little uh, glitch in the 
spells description. Anyways, it is one of the most important things a Warlock can get because this is going to be your main range damage dealer. And for the case of this build, it works as being a Psychic Blast of Force that we can cast really easily and is only going to get stronger as we level up. So it's definitely something we want to pick up here. I'm also going to suggest we grab the Friends uh, Cantrip because, again, kind of using Psychic Manipulation in conversation works. And this is just one of the most important uh, cantrips in the game for dialogue. As for our spells, we're definitely going to be taking both of the ones that our sump class grants us. No reason to switch that up. And as for our ability scores, now, again, another criticism of a lot of my builds, which makes sense, is that I've been kind of getting ability scores wrong. I usually go for a 17-15 split on the main stat and constitution, which people have pointed out to me, rightly so, that this is kind of a waste of a, um, kind of a waste of, like, I guess, potential points and potential growth. Uh, by the way, kind of everything's calculated because um, odd numbers uh, don't really work very well when build making because you don't actually get the ability the ability improvement. Uh, but usually, if you want to go with a 17 in an ability school, you can get Ethel's Boon to bust, boost that up to an 18 and be stronger in the long run. But I understand that that's not a decision everyone will want to make. So I'm going to be building around not using Ethel's Boon probably from now on just to make the ability scores a bit more clear. So we're going to be going for a 16 in Charisma. No surprises there. We want It's our main stat, especially as we're going to be a Blade Warlock. So we're definitely going to want to have this high. Uh, next up, we definitely want our uh, dexterity to be a decent score. Probably 14 is good enough. I can't see us needing to go higher than that. So we'll definitely put that there. Let's just lower this down a bit and put that up. Uh, we're definitely going to want our constitution to be 16 as well, just so we have that decent amount for our concentration. Uh, but yeah, definitely overall this is kind of a good stat spread. I mean, as, but then obviously now that we're kind of going for these lower stats, we do actually get a bit more room to play around. If you want to put your dexterity to 15 to bump that up later, you can. Or you could put your con down to 15, put your dex up to 16, and then grab resilient constitution later on if you wanted to get um, a uh, constitution saving for proficiency, which could actually be pretty important. However, I do want to mainly focus on full ability score improvements with this build because we want to pump our charisma up as high as we can, as early as we can. So I definitely think just taking the 16 in constitution here makes more sense. Uh, so I think a 14 in dexterity is fine since we're mainly going to be using our charisma for our attacks and we're going to be using medium armor, uh, which... Uh, the medium armor that I've chosen will use our full dexterity, so feel free to put this higher if you want, but it's not a huge deal. So then that leaves us with four points to do whatever we like. If we want to go for a little bit of strength, we can. I personally like pumping up wisdom here a bit, just because I feel like these this 12 points in wisdom is going to give us um, good saving... Like, well, not good, but decent saving for us against a lot of the more dam uh, damning status effects in this game. Uh, and so I definitely feel like having a little bit of wisdom is a good idea. So at level 2, we're going to be getting our Warlock Invocations. These are super, super important for the build. And of course, we're going to be taking Agonizing and Repelling Blast. This is going to buff up our Eldritch Blast to be as powerful as it possibly can as we level up. Definitely worth grabbing this, as again, it makes that, soup, that Psychic Blast a lot more powerful. As for our spells, you can take whatever you want here. It entirely depends on what you think is within the theme. Obviously, Charm Person works, but again, with friends, I don't really see this being necessary. Uh, Armor of Agapis is a really, really good spell that will um, give you more tankiness, giving you temporary hit points and a cold damage retaliation. However, I do find with Warlock's limited spell slots, this becomes a little bit less useful as you're going to be want to be casting more spells. So it's really a pick whatever you like situation. It really doesn't matter. I will probably take Armor of Agathis just because even with the limited spell slots, it's still useful in the early game, but you could swap this out later if you wish. Next up on Warlock Level 3, we're going to be getting what we are here for, the Pact Boon, and this is obviously super important. We're going to be getting Pact to the Blade, as I said. This is going to allow us to use our Charisma modifier for our, um, our damage and attack rolls on our weapon, so there's no reason to level things like Strength, even though we're using a Greatsword. So we definitely want to pick this up. Uh, you do also get the Pact to the Blade feature to summon magical weapons, but it's not... Or, sorry, the Bind... Yeah, the Pact of the Blade feature, yeah, to summon random weapons, but it's not really necessary here. We're mainly here for Bind Pact Weapon. Uh, next up, we get level 2 spells at this level, and I would definitely recommend being on theme and grabbing Phantasmal Force. It's a concentration spell that allows you to do 1d6 psychic damage uh, per turn if you don't deal another damage type, but if you do deal another damage type to the enemy, 
uh, they will continue to take that damage type for every turn for as long as you uh, keep your concentration up. So you can do a big slash of our greatsword and the enemy is going to take slashing damage every turn, for example. But it's again, it's another skill to trick the mind into thinking that it's taking damage when it isn't quite fun. Uh, yeah, moving on. Next up at Warlock level 4, we're going to be getting our first feat, and like I said, we're going to want to be grabbing that ability score improvement and bumping ourselves up to 18. Absolutely probably one of the most important things we're going to be able to do with this build, because this is not only going to boost our spellcasting, but also our weapon damage. Uh, we also get another cantrip at this point, I would grab Mage Hand, even though we do get Mage Hand once per long rest as a uh, racial feature as a Kifyanki, this is going to allow, allow us to cast it much more often. Uh, you get another level 2 spell here, uh, I think Crowd of Madness, Enthrall, Hold Person, and even Misty Step can work here. Shatter as well if you want a psychic, kind of a psychic blast, but this one will deal thunder damage. So it's entirely up to you what you want to pick. I always like Hold Person here, I think it's a really good spell that allow, that is going to even make your martial stuff stronger, because you can wail on them with critical hits. Definitely want to pick this up. Next up at Warlock level 5, we're getting the big one, we're getting our class feature, which is our Deepened Pact, and for Blade Warlocks, this means we are now going to be able to do an extra attack with our Pact weapon, so we are now a full Martial Fighter, as well as a Spellcaster, meaning that we have reached Martial status, which is now a proper Psychic Warrior. Uh, we're also going to get level 3 spells at this point, and again, there's lots of things that are on theme here. Slow can work really well if you wanted to create like a psychic anti-gravity field or something where they feel like they're being levitated and such they're slower. Uh, hypnotic Gaze if you want to hypnotize your enemies messing with their mind. Uh, you could get Crown of Madness here which makes enemies mad. Uh, or you could get Fear if you want them to be afraid of you, trick them into fearing you. Lots of stuff that is on theme here. Personally take whatever you, I would say take whatever you like here. It's not a big deal. I'm going to go with Hypnotic Pattern just because I want it. Uh, and you also get another Eldritch Invocation at this, at this level, and we're also going to be taking Maya the Mind. We can get Slow as an extra spell this way, and Slow is a powerful spell for dealing with groups, so it's nice to pick up. But if you want to, you can also go with the Sign of Ill Omen to be able to, like, inflict a curse. And But I feel like Maya the Mind is definitely more on theme here. Now, next up at Warlock level 6, we're going to be getting another one of our subclass features, and this is Entropic Ward. As a reaction, you can impose disadvantage on an attack roll against you. If the attack misses, you gain advantage on your next attack roll against your attacker for one turn. This is a super powerful ability, and I feel like um, it's it's quite on theme. Maybe using something a bit similar to like I guess like a psychic force field to kind of to like reflect an enemy's attack away from you, and then being able to attack them while they're open feels pretty good, and it's a fun little ability to have. We're going to also get another spell at this point. Again, take whatever you like. I'm personally going to be grabbing Fear here, as it's something I would quite like to have. I might also, at this point, replace uh, Armor of Agathis, since I think at this point you're probably not going to be using it as much, because you want to save your spell slots for other things, and I would change it to Crown of Madness. But that's just a personal choice. You don't have to do that. Next up at Warlock level 7, we're going to be getting another Eldritch Invocation, which means we get, and we're also going to get another one that's perfect for the build, we're going to be able to get Dreadful Word, which allows us to cast Confusion. Confusion basically allowing us to select a group of enemies and cause them to attack at random, or wander around aimlessly, or occasionally skip their turns, basically completely mind-fucking them. And this, so this is absolutely on theme and a great ability to have. As far as our spells go, uh, you've got a few options here. Now, with this build, I feel like I'm going to be going for the more of the law thing here is is this is a Githyanki who after being um, kind of taken over by the tadpole it started giving them even greater psychic abilities than they had before which and I think maybe as a fun little headcanon thing maybe something deep within the Githyanki's genetic code starts to awaken a bit and kind of and leans them into using the Mind Flayer powers a bit more, because if the, for those of you that don't know, uh, the Githyanki race was either originally subjugated by or created by the Mind Flayers to be slaves. And of course, that's how they got their psychic abilities and why they're so against the Mind Flayers in Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, but so, maybe again, having a Mind Flayer tadpole inside a Githyanki would kind of 
maybe start to awaken that old desire to lean into and serve the Mind Flayers or use their abilities. So I feel like in this case, taking Evard's Black Tentacles might actually be on theme. Because if we go into this with the whole thing that the, the Mind Flayer Tadpole is what's giving us all of these psychic powers, not an actual Warlock Patron, then maybe even having something a bit more Eldritch, like the ability to summon Eldritch Tentacles using our Mind Powers, could actually be really interesting. But if you feel like that's not on theme, you can obviously take some of the earlier level options or maybe even Counterspell. Detect Thoughts is also really on theme, obviously. The ability to read minds is really good. Uh, or even uh, Mirror Image, create an illusion of yourself that makes your enemy think there's more than one of you. There's a whole bunch of options here, but I actually kind of want to take Yvart's Black Tentacles just because it's a little bit different. But things like Detect Thoughts or Mirror Image or even Misty Step or any of these could work. Just pick whatever you think is your favorite, but I kind of want to use this here because I've not used it before. Next up at Warlock level 8, we're going to be getting our second feat. Now, you've got a few options here. If you want to go for that ability to score improvement and bump yourself right up to 20, that is always quite good, and it's probably what I would personally recommend. However, there are a few other things you could do. Since we're using a greatsword, great weapon master becomes a viable option. Since we're quite concentration heavy, we could go for Warcaster to gain advantage on concentration saving throws, and also the ability to attack enemies uh, with Shocking Grasp if they move, if as an opportunity attack. You've got a lot of options here. I'm personally going to go for this ability score improvement to keep things simple, but it's your life. Do what you want to do. Uh, we're also going to get another spell at this level, and I think I am probably going to take the whole Detect Force thing here, just because I forgot, kind of forgot it existed until I started talking about it, so I think it's actually really on theme, and you should probably pick it up, because it's really fun in dialogue. Uh, next up at Warlock level 9, our final level of Warlock, we're going to be getting another Eldritch Invocation, and you get a few options here. Uh, you could go for Minions of Chaos, which is going to give you Contra Elemental, which is always nice to have. Otherworldly Leap, which is probably the closest thing that's on theme to being a psychic thing here, which is going to let you cast Enhanced Leap as much as you like, completely for free. But as a level 9 Warlock feature, this seems kind of underpowered, but that might just be me. Uh, Whispers of the Grave is Speak with Dead. Yeah, again, a little bit underpowered for this level, but hey ho. You could go for the Book of Ancient Secrets, giving you a few extra spells, including the Silent spell, which could be um, like thematically kind of twisted for this build as like you silent sil like infiltrate a mage's mind and psychically influence them to be unable to speak so that they can't cast their spells that could always work but you've got a ton of options here i probably will take the book of ancient secrets just so you have a little bit more spell options but it's honestly completely up to you uh as for your spells we're going to be getting telekinesis at this level which is awesome uh Yep, and there's definitely something we're going to want to be grabbing, for sure. Now, I said that the last, that the level 9 of Warlock was the last Warlock level we had, we were going to be taking. That is true, but if you wanted to take this build all the way to Warlock level 12, you're not really going to be losing anything. And I actually think you'll still get a strong build, because at level 10, you would be able to get something like Dominate Person or and grab another cantrip and then later on get more eldritch invocations and even a mystical carnum at level 11 plus an extra feat at level 12 there's nothing wrong with going for warlock here and getting the best out of it however i want to kind of do some multi-classing here and i will remind everyone that when i do these builds i just showcase one class after the other i usually don't show like an actual progression order i leave that up to the viewer to decide how they want to do their build but I would personally, with this build, say that any multi-class you want to do, do it post-level 5, because then at least you pretty much have your full Warlock Blade Pack to the Blade kit before you start multi-classing. But what multi-class am I going to recommend here? Well, you've got a couple of options, but you want to stick with something charisma-based. If you want to go for something a bit more martial, get some heavy armor proficiency and do it and a bunch of other stuff. Oh no, you wouldn't get heavy armor proficiency, I'm sorry. But you could get some uh, extra stuff here. You could, you could go for Paladin, that would get you like Divine Smites, Channel Oath ability... Blah, 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 you could get a good, few good things here. Sorcerer would get you meta magic of a limited amount of it and a few extra spells and spell slots. Uh, cleric you could dip into, maybe if you wanted to dip into knowledge, knowledge Cleric and get the ability of a deity. Maybe if you wanted to play this as a servant of Vlakif, you could go for a Vlakif Cleric. But honestly, I think the best option is, say it with me, we all know it, it's Bard. Because it's going to get us a few things that we want for this build. Special, including Vicious Mockery, an easy-to-use Psychic Cantrip, which you may feel is kind of redundant when we have extra attack, but I'll show you why this could be important later on. Uh, next up, you can, well, I mean, for your next Cantrip, you can take whatever you like. Blade Ward is a good, like, little 
quick psychic barrier to give you resistance against physical attacks. Pretty good. Uh, as for the spells, we already get Dissonance Whispers and uh, Tasha's Hideous Laughter from our Warlock subclass, so this is where we get to just take some of our utility kit. I would definitely grab Long Strider and Featherfall here, and um, probably Sleep as well, since so it's one of the psychic abilities that we don't actually have. Uh, you can also grab Animal Friendship if you wanted to kind of like uh, have psychic influence over animals. That's definitely on theme. Speak with animals if you want to psych psychically communicate with animals. Disguise self if you want to kind of create a psychic illusion that you're not who you actually appear to be. There's a whole bunch of options here. Thunder Wave if you wanted to go for like a close range psychic blast, which is probably what I'm going to go for here because I want another offensive magic option. Uh, so yeah, we can go with that. You also get to pick a instrument here, take whatever you like. I'm going to take a violin, because I don't know, I don't think I have yet, unless I forget. You also get a skill proficiency here, take whatever you like. Next up at Bard level 2, we're going to be getting our main Bard features. We're going to be getting Jack of All Trades, which is going to make us more effective at, um, you know, passing skill checks, which is always good, especially when we have lower soft stats. And also we're going to be getting Song of Rest here, which means we have a third short rest. This is extremely important as we're playing a Warlock, because this means that we're going to be able to reco recover our very limited spell slots three times per long rest instead of just two, which is super, super important. More spells over the course of a session. And we're also going to get another spell here. Again, this is kind of a pick your favorite situation. I'm personally going to go with maybe Fairy Fire, but it's not really on theme, but you can take whatever you like here. It really doesn't matter. And finally, we're at Bard level 3, and we get to pick our subclass. Like I say, you could have taken this multi-class way earlier and then come back to Warlock. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but as for our subclass, I don't really have a specific recommendation here. All of these are going to do something that feels pretty on theme. Uh, College of Swords, obviously, if you want to be of a more of a martial fighter, this is definitely the way to go. You're going to get the blade flourishes, and you're going to get a fighting style, even though none of neither of the fighting styles showcased in this class are going to be the ones that we're using. Dueling a two-weapon fighting don't really work for us, since we're using a two-handed weapon. However, obviously, these are nothing to sneeze at, but because we're not taking as many levels in Bard here, you're not going to be getting as many uses out of this, because we'll have less Bardic inspiration. So, it may not seem like the most like the most perfect option but it's definitely probably one of the stronger ones if you want to lean more into the martial aspect college of valor is an interesting one because you get your combat inspiration which is going to let you do a bunch of different things and it gives your allies different buffs during combat and various other parts of the game depending on which kind of variation of combat inspiration you pick there is actually kind of like different versions this little tooltip here doesn't really do a very good job of explaining the full capacity i would definitely check out the wiki to see exactly what this lets you do but I actually think I'm going to go with College of Law here. This is going to give us a few more skill proficiencies, which is always nice. But it's, always, it's also going to give us a subclass feature, Cutting Words, which lets you use your reaction to impose disadvantage on an attack roll, I believe. So you're going to have a lot of ways to like interrupt your enemy's kind of flow. So I would definitely... But it's entirely up to you. I just want to kind of use College of Law because I haven't used it before. And it's not Swords Bard. But, I mean, and I feel like I can justify this thematically, but, like... Again, more psychic influence through cutting words, but honestly, you could take College of Swords and probably feel pretty powerful. But like I say, with this, we're going to get a few features, like a few more proficiencies, so take whichever you like, it really doesn't matter. You're also going to get two expertise at this level, in which case the ones that have been chosen are pretty good, but I'm probably going to do this. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then we get two more. Uh, we have high enough wisdom for perception and insight to probably be good picks here. And we're also going to get a level 2 spell at this point. Uh, take whatever you like. It really doesn't matter. We already have a lot of the spells that we would kind of be looking to get with this. Uh, sea Invisibility will allow you to psychically uh, sense an enemy. You could get Silence here since we only have one use of it. Um, with the uh, Warlock feature. So you could, if you want to use it more often, you could grab it here. Uh, invisibility could also be good and on theme. If you want to like confuse your enemies into thinking you're not actually standing there when you are. Uh, but really, take whatever you like here. It doesn't matter. I think I'm going to go with Shatter, actually, because, again, you could kind of theme it as a Psychic Blast, and I just want a few more offensive options for, for us. And that is the build. Now, um, obviously, I want to kind of get a few things out the way right off the bat. 
uh, like I said before, with my, with comparison to my Sonic Warrior video, uh, this build is going to be much more limited in your ability to actually cast spells. Yes, we have two level 5 spell slots that recover on a short rest, which is pretty good, and because of our bard levels, we're also going to be getting four level 1 slots and two level 2 slots, but obviously my Sonic Warrior build is going to be able to cast more often and more frequently. Uh, but like I say, we obviously get to use Blind Pack Weapon here, so we're, and we're not multi-ability score dependent, we're more single ability score dependent, and we're also a full martial fighter. So, let's get into the equipment. Now, if you saw my Asoyonic Warrior video, you're going to recognize a few of these, but I have changed up quite a few things here, because again, another problem with my Psionic Warrior video is, is it was back when I first started the channel, and I was just looking at endgame equipment, where in this video, it's going to look, I'm looking more into actually having a more kind of like progression so a lot of this equipment can be obtained in act one or act two with some options that you can pivot into in act three but let's get into it so let's get into our main thing here which is our weapon the sword silver sword of the astral plane this can be obtained um both in act one look up how to do it uh, and as we're gonna and this is basically the psychic weapon uh while the gif is wielding this you do an extra d6 of psychic damage on every attack it's a legendary plus three weapon and a gif wielding this weapon has advantage on uh, all the mental saving throws and is resistant to psychic damage and cannot be charmed. This is the weapon to use if you are a gif easily. If you are a gif, yes, gif, not gif, like the image, <laughs> and it's not pronounced gif, you heathens. Um, next up, I'll go over the bow as well. We're going to be using the dark fire short bow here because it's going to give us a free use of haste, extra resistances, and is a decent ranged weapon on in its own right, even though we're not focusing on it. It's a slot we're not using, and it's a free buff that we just would like to have giving us three resistances total which is nice so let's get into the actual armor now same as my psionic warrior build we're using the circlet of psionic revenge when you succeed a saving throw which we have advantage on quite a few of them uh the, the we, we get to deal 1d4 of psychic damage to the person who tried to who inflicted that saving throw and a gif yankee wearing this is also going to get a plus one bonus to their intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws basically making those mental saving throws extremely hard to fail uh, next up is the Cloak of Elemental Absorption. This is not necessary, I just really wanted to show it off. It's going to give you the Absorb Element spell from 5e, uh, and basically you take half damage from the Elemental spell, and then on, on your next weapon attack, you deal a 1d6 of that damage. Uh, it's pretty good, um, but I recommend when you get, and you can get this in Act 2 quite easily, but I recommend when you get to Act 3, you swap over to the Nymph Cloak, which is going to give you a cast of Dominate Person, another psychic spell that's on theme, uh, once per long rest so definitely useful i mean ov obviously you can pick up this spell if you decide to go further and more look as well but this is just another way of getting it without needing to go out of our way i hate that it doesn't exit the tooltip that easily right uh, next up is the 1t scale mail this is just again this is probably one of the better armor sets you can get in that too uh it's basically it's a decent piece of medium armor which uses your full dexterity modifier and doesn't disimpose and doesn't dis impose disadvantage on stealth ability checks my apologies and you also get a plus one bonus to initiative rolls and it just looks really good uh again this is kind of this is optional if you have another armor set that you get in act two that you want to go with that's fine but you can definitely but i definitely recommend this one as it is just one of the stronger pieces of armor you can get and looks pretty good uh when you get to act three however you've got a couple of options and i would personally pivot into the armor of agility which is basically the same as the 1t scale mail uh in terms of ability but it is a direct upgrade it still uses your full dexterity stat and it will um additionally not impose disadvantage on stealth and it will also give you a plus two to all of your saving throws making them even stronger i mean obviously maybe it doesn't matter as much because we haven't pumped up our dexterity to the point where it really goes above like the limit on medium armor but if you decided you wanted to go for something maybe like the gloves of dexterity uh to kind of you know bump that up you can get a lot more ac out of this but let's get into my actual glove option that I went with for this build, which is the Harachnia Braces. These can be obtained in Act 2. Uh, it lets you cast Mage Hand as a bonus action. You get a plus one to your strength saving throws. And you also get to cast Telekinesis once per long rest for free. Yes, we already have the Telekinesis spell, but again, we have limited spell slots. So an extra use of it uh, every short rest, actually. I didn't realize that I thought it was a long rest. It's a short rest. is really good because it's basically an extra use of one of our um, most important spells for free. Next up, we have the Boots of Striding. A lot of psychic spells use your concentration, so this works pretty well. When you cast a spell that requires concentration, you gain momentum from one turn, and if you don't know, momentum gives you an extra little bit of movement speed um, for each kind of stacking turn that you have it. Uh, basically, you're going to be getting uh, one, an extra 1.5 meters. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Uh, you 
it's removed when you are restrained, incapacitated, or prone. However, the Boots of Striding gives you a little bit of resistance against that. While you are concentrating, you cannot be knocked prone or moved against your will, and you also get a little buff bump to your athletics. Pretty cool. However, when you get to Act 3, I would recommend pivoting into the Boots of Psionic Movement. When a Gif Yankee casts Fly, their next melee weapon attack deals more psychic damage on theme, above to your dexterity saving throws, and you also get the ability to cast Fly once per long rest, triggering this ability. So, yeah, it's just a nice little bit of extra movement and a little bit of extra damage once per long rest. Not the greatest thing ever, you might even want to stick with the Boots of Striding, but I felt like it was so on theme that I had to bring it up. Uh, let's get into the accessories now. We have the Spell Crux Amulet. This can be obtained in Act 2, and it gives you the ability to restore an expended spell slot of any level as a bonus action once per long rest, giving us essentially another Warlock spell slot. So we have, in effect, three, which is really good. Normally you have to go to a level 11 of Warlock for this, and if you did go all the way Warlock for this build, you would technically have four Warlock spell slots, which is really powerful. Uh, next up is a Strange Conduit Ring. While concentrating on a spell, the wearer's weapon attacks deal an additional wonderful psychic damage. This is just an extra little buff that we get for free because we're going to be concentrating pretty much all of the time. And last up, the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel. This was the centerpiece of my uh, original Psyoc Warrior build. Uh, you, contain this, you can obtain this the second you start Act 3 if you know what to do without really having to find anything. And after hitting a creature with a weapon attack, you can cast an Illusionment or enchantment, enchantment Spells as a bonus action. So what this allows us to do with this build is attack, extra attack, and then bonus action, go for any of our spells. We, so it lets us do a full turn of Marshall, and we can cast something like Telekinesis, Shatter. Oh, not Shatter, sorry, that's like the one spell. Why did I say, they say that? That's the one spell you can't do with this. Uh, you could go for, like, Hypnotic Pattern. Uh, you could go for Crown of Madness. You could go for Fear, Tasha's, uh, Dissonant Whispers. But of course, if we basically just want a th uh, third attack per turn for free, we use Vicious Mockery. This is going to do 3d4 psychic damage in this point, and if it hits, uh, it, the, tar the target has disadvantage on its next attack roll. So your main kind of damage rotation, if you don't want to spend spell slots, is going to be attack, extra attack, Vicious Mockery, and then your opponent will have disadvantage on their next attack roll, which is awesome. This is a super, super strong effect that I would definitely recommend uh, having around. This is going to be our basic rotation, and three attacks per turn is not bad. Uh, and it's all on theme, so yeah, pretty darn good in my opinion. Uh, this is this was kind of how I justified not getting extra attack in my original Psyonic Warrior build, but here it's just way more powerful. Hello, it's me from the future, but technically the past. It's the future from the recording I just did where I talked about the build, and now I'm doing a little bit of a weird edit here because I completely forgot to talk about the Illithid powers, which are actually, what, in my opinion, a center point of this build and super, super important. Because we're kind of playing this GIF character who is kind of tempted and turning to the dark side because of the original origins of the GIF to use these psychic powers granted by the temple, uh, I wanted to actually talk about the, the um, Illithid abilities and the kind of ones I would try and prioritize prioritize getting, but I kind of just wanted to talk about them in general because I never really include them in my builds because again I think they're a character choice, not something you should build towards, so I really wanted to look into this. So here we go. Uh, here we have a list, this top like table here is all the illithid powers you can get without spoilers for Act 2 here, uh, taking the partial illithid kind of gambit. Uh, or sacrifice basically so this these have some really really useful abilities that are going to be on theme for this build so let's get into it the first one you're going to want to grab is psychic overload mainly because it's going to allow us to unlock our next stage stuff that we want to get quite quickly uh, but this is also a really good ability on its own all your attacks will deal an extra 1d4 psychic damage but you take 1d4 psychic damage every turn it can be a bit risky in the early game but you definitely want to be grabbing it for um, the fact that it unlocks some stuff later and having that little bit of extra psychic damage is always good uh, favorable beginnings is also a good one for uh, social stuff but i'm mainly going to be focusing on the combat stuff here concentrated blast we do a lot of concentrated sp concentration spells here uh because most of the psychic spells are concentration based so this is a really powerful attack that you get to do um using your um kind of concentration to deal 3d6 psychic damage because you have to be concentrating on another spell to cast this 
And um, if the target was concentrating, you heal as much damage that was dealt to it. But the problem is the spell you were concentrating on will end. So it is a really powerful psychic blast, but it ends your concentration. However, if you're just using an enemy, using your concentration to kind of lock down an enemy or two, using this ability to finish them off is always a good idea. So yeah, definitely worth using. Uh, also, stage fright is really good. Enemies will have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. With the amount of different ways we impose disadvantage with this build, it really makes you harder to hit. And when they do, they take 2d6 psychic damage every time they miss. So really, really cool. Uh, you're also, you could also grab something like Displace if you want to kind of use your psychic abilities or maybe like Thunder Wave or something to put, or Telekinesis to push and throw people around. They'll take an extra 1d8 of psychic damage each time you do, but you'd have to grab Force Tunnel for that. Uh, also, Repulse is a really good one that you can kind of do like a Psychic Blast to push everyone away from you. Psionic Backlash is also one of the more important ones you can get. You can get it after getting Concentrated Blast, uh, which is kind of, it's kind of like Counter Spell. It won't stop every spell, but it does a little bit of Psychic Damage. And if it's a Concentration Spell, because you're doing damage, you obviously have a chance to break the Concentration and make the spell useless. Um, yeah, those are kind of the ones I would mainly go for. I think I would definitely recommend going Overload. Concentrated Blast, Stage Fright, uh, Psionic Backlash to start, and then definitely pick up something like Favorable Beginnings, um, Repulsor, and by extension, uh, Force Tunnel as well, just to have a ton of cool uh, psychic options there. But if you also wanted to go the Partial Elifid route, you get a ton more interesting options. Uh, you could go for Elifid Expertise to get Proficiency in Persuasion, Deception, and Intimidation, always fun. Uh, you could go for Psychic Dominance, use your reaction to count, to basically use a full, um, use basically a full counter spell that works off of your proficiency bonus, can be really, really good. Black Hole is hugely powerful. Uh, Fly is obviously very on theme, and if you're using those Giff Yankee boots that give you extra psychic damage, it will trigger every time you use this. Uh, Mind Blast basically is going to do a massive amount of damage because we're a high um, charisma caster so this is a really really powerful psychic blast you can get this straight away also the mind sanctuary and free cast combo just allowing you basically to say i don't care about action economy let me do whatever i want when i want basically into making actions or bonus actions interchangeable is really really good and also if you go through this special quest here you could also get survival instinct allowing you basically to say i don't die Lots and lots of really interesting stuff here that I absolutely recommend picking up with this build. Since our Warlock spell slots are limited, having more things that you can do outside of your spell slots is really good, and all of these are on theme. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to talk about this quickly. Back to me from the past past, so the, the very past. Uh, so yeah, that is the build. Um... Now, I kind of wanted to make this build because, again, it felt a bit strange that for a, a video that is my most viewed video, like, for some reason, my Psionic Warrior build is, like, the first thing that comes up on YouTube if you search Baldur's Gate 3 Psychic build. So I wanted to kind of, like, re like not redo it, but, again, provide maybe a more sustainable alternative, a more viable alternative than that build for people who wanted to lean more into the martial cap the martial fighter aspect uh, i still think overall i prefer my original psionic warrior build be just just because i think it's more fun as and i just kind of like the idea of being more of a caster than a martial fighter because a lot of the builds i make in this are martial fighters uh but i do feel like overall this is a pretty decent build again you're going to have access to a lot of different stuff a powerful armor and weapon combination uh, you can also, and also a ton of spells, and basically the ability to do three attacks per turn is really good. Um, the f three bath levels aren't set in stone, though. I recommend taking one just to get Vicious Mockery at least, but the other two could kind of be whatever you like. Like I say, you could go for, um, you could go for Paladin levels if you want Divine Smite. You could go for, um... Like maybe fighter levels if you want the great weapon fighting fighting style and like maybe like um a level of like maybe you want some eldritch knight in there or some battle master or something basically kind of play around with those last last three levels and kind of decide what you like you may be tempted to go for thief rogue for that extra bonus section to cast vicious mockery um twice to get kind of four attacks per round unfortunately that does not work uh the ring of the mystic scoundrel only works for one bonus action after that it turns off so it doesn't really work with um thief rogue in that aspect but it still could be a decent option if you wanted to like get like the like for bonus action dash for example um to be able to close in 
Uh, I, I mean, I, there's other combinations there. Like, again, I said Sorcerer for Meta Magic. You could do that. Play around with it. Heck, you might not even want to go this high in Warlock. You might find that you're not really caring about the higher level spells. I would prefer to go for something else. Maybe you want to do, like, a Sorcerer Den. Maybe going for, like, you know, Warlock Paladin or Warlock Sorcerer for a Sorlock. Uh, there's a lot of different things you could do with this. But I mainly like to go to the higher levels of our main caster here to get those high level... Um, psychic spells like telekinesis because again if you've not used telekinesis in this game it is so fun if you think shoving enemies in this game is fun you're gonna love this uh but yeah that is going to do it for me for this video uh thank you all so much for watching and i will see you all next time